When you meet Angie Verona, you can't help but notice her smile wherever she goes. Angie's one of those kids who just always seems to be smiling, even as we ask her about the pictures that changed her life. You're famous. I wouldn't say famous. I'd say more like infamous. Wait. <laughs> okay, wait. I need to get rid of the smile. Hold on. A good kid. A great future, you'd hope. But what happened to this Miami teen four years ago nearly destroyed her. The girls were really cruel. Like, everyone was saying how I'm going to become a porn star and how, like, I'm such a slut for doing that. Like, I don't want this to ever happen to anyone else. What happened to Angie Verona is every parent's nightmare in the digital age. A cautionary tale for our time. Angie was 14. She had a boyfriend, her first. And like so many teens and young people today, she took some racy pictures of herself. So here they are, a few photographs of a 14-year-old girl in bra and panties taken for her first boyfriend. No one ever thinks that, yeah, I'm going to take these pictures and it's going to end up all over the Internet. You just do it for yourself. Yes, Angie's pictures ended up all over the Internet, all over, including some of the scuzziest pedophile corners of the web. It was depressing. Like, at first I was like, I can't believe this is happening. And I cried a lot. Google search Angie's name and you get more than 600,000 results, more than 55,000 images, all there against her will, all of it beyond her or anyone's power to stop. You see, Angie stored her pictures online on a website called Photobucket. She used a password to protect them to make sure no one but her boyfriend could see them. But like a lot of other girls who do the same thing, she got hacked. Do you regret taking those pictures? Uh, hell yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> you do. If I could go back in time, I would have listened to my parents, stayed off the internet, stayed off my phone, and only used it for emergencies. Angie is not alone. A recent survey suggests one in five teen girls has electronically sent or posted online nude or semi-nude images of themselves. I know people who still send out pictures, and after knowing everything that's happened to me, they still say, it, it can't happen to me, it's not going to happen to me. Angie's pictures went viral. She's been stalked, her home and daily whereabouts discussed and posted on porn websites and pedophile chat rooms. And those discussions include rape fantasies and other sick scenarios. Angie's father, Juan, has lived this nightmare, too. How did it feel that your daughter was essentially being traded in these porn sites for pedophiles? It's frightening. We're wary. You know, we're vigilant, so we have the police you know, working with us. Have you been worried about her physical safety? I'd go crazy if, if I concentrated on it. You're always, you always have that worry. It was all too much. The family called the police, even the FBI, but there was little they could do. The pictures were not technically obscene because Angie was not naked in them. Angie tried to fight her tormentors online, which only made things worse. The kids at school, as you might expect, were merciless. It's just sad how people don't know the story and yet they're so quick to judge and call me names. So mostly, like, I guess the name calling is the hardest to get over. And there was these mean girls too that would send the pictures. They even showed it to my teachers. At that point, my parents moved me from that school. Angie moved schools twice and she has now chosen to homeschool her final months of high school. She tried to run away. She started using drugs. She thought about killing herself. I went through a lot of issues. I put my parents through a lot. At points, I'd go crazy on them when it wasn't their fault, and I'd run away. And I'd make them find me and whatnot because I wanted to feel loved because I wasn't getting loved by anyone. It was always criticism. <laughs> And I kind of took it out on them, and that's what hurts me the most, that I had to take everything out on them just to feel good about myself. Were you ever afraid you might lose her? Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it was a bad time. As parents, I think you never give up. You should never give up on your children because you don't know what tortures they're going through internally. So maybe you're thinking, didn't Angie bring this on herself? Some of her critics online even say it's all a publicity stunt. They think I did this on purpose to get the fame. 
and the popularity, but in fact, the truth is, I don't want to do anything having to be famous. What do you say to people who say that you're partly to blame, Angie? I am. I took the pictures. I mean, in a way, I hold myself responsible, which kind of hurts me too because it could have all been prevented. But when they say I'm part to blame, I agree. And she's had a chance to think about why she and so many other girls in our society feel pressured to do this. It's hard for teenage girls now. So much pressure on us to feel beautiful, to be accepted. Girls send it out just to feel loved. Today, Angie is living at home with Juan and Maria, and she's still with that first boyfriend she sent her pictures to four years ago, though they broke up during all the craziness. She, they all somehow seem stronger. And Angie's got something to say to all the creeps out there who exploited and tormented her for years. Some of them are probably watching this. <laughs> what would you say to them? They need to get their life off the internet and into like reality. Girls are more than just their looks, it's the personality as well. Yeah. One girl's journey through the digital hell. And now, smiling, Angie Verona is taking her life back.